It's been a long time, long time. We shouldn't have left you, left you. Without a dope beat, step two, step two, step two, step two, step two, step, 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 step. What's up, everybody? This is the one, aka Joe DeCidion on YouTube, and I'm bringing you a new episode out from the side of my neck. Video games are not art. You know why? Because art is done as a form of expression. Art is created by people who have a desire to be creative. Art is created for the purpose of being created. For being seen. For being admired. There is no set way to create art. There are not any special tools or equipment you can only use to create art. Money is never the main reason or a reason for artists to create art. When it comes to video games, all these issues apply. Video games should be classified only as electronic goods or digital products, but never art. You know, I didn't used to believe that. I didn't used to believe that video games weren't art. Well, all that changed this generation. Which brings me to today's episode, Out From The Side Of My Neck, Episode 25, The Third Party Paradox. If you're a Nintendo Wii console owner, and I mean you only own a Nintendo Wii, there's been one major annoyance this generation, the lack of quality third party support for your system. The only systems in the history of gaming to receive worse support were the Nintendo GameCube and the Sega Dreamcast. Even the Xbox, which only sold 3 million more than the GameCube, received more games from third party developers. There's never been another console that was the current generation leader to receive this type of half ass efforts and lackluster attempts of software. If video games were really art, then this would not have happened. But since money is the main reason for this creation of software, this is why we owners have had to deal with this bullshit for a majority of the Wii's current lifespan. Don't be mistaken, there has been some improvement. But overall, the quality from third parties, the efforts they put out, the even desire to create games for the Wii, it is nowhere near the quality, the level it should be for the dominant console on the market especially compared to systems of the past that were, at their time, the dominant console on the market. For some reason, Nintendo-made systems just don't get that kind of love from them, which, in the end, affects us, the Wii owner, the video game consumer. The main problem with games made for the Wii is the overall quality of them. Real artists are capable of creating beautiful art out of anything and with everything. Yet, third party developers who work on Wii games are not capable because, in their opinion, a lack of tools to work with. They have been working on powerful platforms like the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. With new tools and devices that support powerful gaming structures like the Unreal Engine. Do you have to come back and work on the Wii, which is considered to be last generation tech? It's either beyond their skills or desire. Regardless, they do not have the drive that a real artist possess. The other major factor is the perception that their software will not get the financial return they're hoping for. We owners are notorious for not buying software made by them. Instead, spending all their money on high quality first party Nintendo made software. Third party developers having to juggle all these factors when it comes to creating their games. The average third party developer decides to go the cheap route. Bringing imitations of current genre hits they can create easily on HD consoles and leaving their headlining big budget super titles off the Wii. The final straw for me is the lack of effort in creating Final Gear quality PS2 and Xbox games on the Wii. The Wii may not be a PS3 when it comes to hardware, but it is way and far superior than the PS2. Still, there are a few games that show you 
the superiority. This leads us to the third party paradox. Third parties have shown they're not willing to give a damn about making great Wii software. In return, Wii customers have turned their back on purchasing third party software, which leads to them not making more third party Wii software. Recently, Nintendo unveiled the 3DS, the next in the line of Nintendo's handheld portable consoles. Besides having new 3D tech that gets any artist's creative juices flowing, the 3DS will have superior hardware capabilities, which gives them new opportunities to create high quality, advanced level, and spectacular software. Those same third party developers who were reluctant to create quality Wii titles are now jumping, crying, and maybe even paying for a chance to make 3DS games. What's the reason for this newfound desire? Does the 3DS's 3D effects allow these so-called artists a new way to express themselves? Yes, but that's not it. It's the power of the 3DS, the stronger tools, and the compatibility with current gaming engines. So now, all the games Wii owners wanted for their current console, the Nintendo Wii, they can now have on the soon-to-be-released 3DS. Super Street Fighter 4 on a 3DS, a game Capcom first said the Wii could not handle, the same game that ended up on the iPhone and was almost produced for the PSP, both inferior hardwares to the Wii, will now be a 3DS title. A game that could have been produced on the Wii if they really were artists, if they really wanted to put some work. And you know what? They expect you to buy it. Capcom released Resident Evil 4 on the Wii with a new motion control gameplay and control scheme. Even though the Wii is fully backwards compatible, even though most Wii gamers already own the GameCube version of the game or could even buy it and play it on their Wiis, Wii owners bought it again due to the promise made by Capcom. If Wii owners would support the game, they would support the Wii with more Resident Evil games. Well, we did our part. In return, we got an on rail shooter. We even bought that just to show more support. As the auto support, what did we get? Another on rail shooter. That's just one of the many companies who are playing this game with Wii owners. Companies like Ubisoft, Namco Bandai, Square Enix, Tecmo, and Konami, who wouldn't be caught dead creating Wii software, or at least putting their best efforts on the Wii, now have huge plans for the 3DS, and expect you, the forgotten Wii consumer, to be willing to spend all your money on all these great titles that could have been on the Wii. This brings us back to the third party paradox. To be a consumer means to want a product and be willing to pay for that product. When a company is unwilling to provide that product, meeting the standards of the consumer in quality, availability, and affordability, you have every right not to purchase that product. Even out of your own principles, if you choose not to spend your money due to beliefs or dissatisfaction with the provider of that product, you have that right. The problem is, being we owners, you know the cycle of the third party paradox. They provide, you buy. If you do not buy, they will not provide. This is true with all businesses, but where other consoles seem to get chance after chance, no matter if the game is a success or a failure, games made for Nintendo platforms are given only one chance. The first impression is the, is most of the time the last one. So, to my Wii gamers and owners of Nintendo consoles, what are you going to do? Third-party companies have shown us that they don't care about us as consumers. We are not getting as respected as the HD console users. Now, the 3DS meets their standards. They want us to come flocking back and spend money we would have spent on the Wii. If we hold a grudge and not buy these 3DS games, you might end up starting a cycle of them cutting the support for that platform, putting us back in the situation we are in now. If you decide to go in and support them, 
purchasing games that could have been on the Wii. Games that are watered down versions of old HD console titles. It says you are that you are willing to let them disrespect you as a consumer. This issue even has an effect on future consoles. Nintendo has always been a company that does what is needed for them to succeed as a business. Let's say the next round of consoles, Nintendo creates a piece of hardware that is equal to the current levels of HD consoles. The HD console makers then decide to push their hardware even further, creating a level of gap between them that they currently have amongst them now. Again, providing them, the third parties, the same issues they have now, not having the power to produce the same level of software across the board. Once again, putting us in the third party paradox. See, the third party paradox go further than just we issues. It shows the monopoly type control, the power the third party developers have now in the gaming industry. What's the point of buying a HD console with a 100 gig, 250 gig hard drive when the games we buy that come out yearly are not updates? When we are still buying games like Madden, Call of Duty, Rock Band, Guitar Hero each year for the same brand new price we bought them last year. When those games could clearly be used as updates for cheaper prices. Something that will, you know, show us consumers for purchasing the game some love, some respect. Then there's the new internet pass, online pass companies are using. Making consumers or people who buy used games pay an extra ten dollars to play online. So let me get this straight. Some of us already, well, most of us are paying for our internet connection through cable providers. Then most of us are paying online subscriptions to the manufacturer of the console, Xbox Live, PlayStation Network Plus. Yearly subscription, fifty dollars. And then on top of that, some of these games if we buy them used, or hell, if we buy them new, an additional ten dollars is going into that. Where did the consumer win in this? Now let me go back to Nintendo's part of this third-party paradox. The only way to counter this is for Nintendo to provide a superior piece of hardware that covered the needs of the third-party developers. The problem with that is Nintendo has always made their systems affordable for their consumers. Are you willing, as a consumer, to start paying extra on your Nintendo products just so Nintendo can provide third-party companies more powerful hardware? Will you buy a Wii 2 for $300 or $400? There are already signs of this happening. The rumor price for the 3DS is two hundred fifty dollars. That's fifty dollars more than any other hand Nintendo handheld before it. There you have it. The third party paradox. The ultimate game of picking your poison. No matter what you do, you lose. So I'm asking you all, how do you feel? What are you currently doing? Have you stopped buying games for your Wii because of the lack of respect third parties have given us? Or you're a person who only buy Nintendo made games because they're high quality and you don't trust third parties? Are you sitting back waiting for the 3DS just so you can buy these games that could have been on the Wii, but you know they're going to be on the 3DS? Personally, I'm buying a 3DS and majority of games I'm buying will be Nintendo made games. Some of these uh, new 3DS games that are coming out, unless there's something I've never seen before, I'm not purchasing. I'm not buying Street Fighter 4 on, on, on the 3DS. I only bought one copy on the PS3. I didn't buy Super on the PS3 because I don't feel like buying the same game twice. And I'm not buying it th a third time. The same with other games that's coming out on the 3DS. I'm not buying if I already got a version like it already. So, I want to know what you think. Please comment. Please, you know, share your thoughts with me. This is the one. I'll be back soon. Peace.